Have you ever wanted to take your clients through a step-by-step -step checklist process? Well, Sweet Dash just released a new feature called Checklist, and I would love to show you the endless opportunities of how this feature can work in your business. Let's take a look. So let's jump in into the world that is limitless with checklists. I love the fact that they've added it onto the menu with Flow, so you understand that they have the same correlation and functionality. So let's jump into checklist. You might be wondering, how do I set up a checklist? Who is it for? What can I use it for? I'm going to share all those details. So in the beginning, you're going to click checklist. You're going to see the same type of functionality as a Flow. The first thing you're going to decide is who is it for. So you're going to select the usage. If it's for your CRM targets or if it's for your team. You can title the checklist however you like and you can enable for all steps the help unstuck button, which is very similar to what you can do inside of a flow. You can add a checklist item, titling it whatever you need and subtitling it whatever you need. The additional step here is to add a description, but it's not required. You can also add a button text, which will allow them to identify this as like a completed button or the next step button. You can also link the button with an action, which should look similar to what you've already been used to on a portal page. This is by far my favorite part. For each checklist item, you can configure automation specifically for this step. So that can look like adding them to a schedule, adding them to a circle or an audience, just to give them reminders so that they don't forget to complete this automation. Once they have completed the automation, you can then remove them from those items. So you can remove them from the schedule, the circle, or even tell them congratulations through a text message. Pretty cool. Every item in itself has a help I'm stuck button and you can continue the process by adding more checklist items. Now, how does it all work, right? The greatest step that I want to make sure I notate as well is that each checklist item has a notification that is specifically for this checklist. So you can configure the actual email that's sent once this checklist is triggered and assigned to this user. I'm sure you're asking, well, how do I apply this to my current process? There are a few ways. You can actually set them up inside of Flows, and let's go there now to show you exactly what I mean. So let's say that you have a new client onboarding and you need that checklist item to be in that onboarding process. Well, here you go. You're able to add this checklist to this flow so on the first navigation of them entering the portal, they're able to complete this item. So it's similar to what you saw, this is the title, this is the subtitle. The see more, which is gonna be the item description, will allow them to drop that box down and be able to see the details. This link is exactly that button text that we've created and then if I click it, it takes me to an action. This doesn't have an action, therefore, once I'm done, it would actually take me to complete it. Once you're completed with through all of the steps, it would actually continue to go through the process. In the case that the user gets stuck and they initiate the help I'm stuck button, it will pull up a pop-up box, will allow them to send a message, and then you're able to see the action that they've gotten stuck on inside of the back end. I'll show you that in just a moment. This is a flow, so this flow is able to do everything that a normal flow would do so you can add forms you can embed items and you can move them through this flow process but this would be a step in the flow that will be required to be completed before moving forward so let's see what it looks like on a portal page unfamiliar on how to get to a portal page you're going to use contact go to portal pages and then you're going to see a plus button right next to it which is what i click to get directly here on a portal page you will assign this to either a contact or a circle so this will enable a group of people to see this checklist or a direct person to see this checklist. Remember, you have the ability to add a circle directly here. So don't worry, you don't have to move from the space to create that. Plus, you can internally assign it to a staff member or a team. You can also create team here as well. So that is great. The next step is for you to add the menu group as well as the dynamic page setup, the title and the menu. Once you've done all of that, you'll come down, you're going to click content block editor. In the content block editor, there are different features. There's an ability to create either a row with different columns and within that row, you're able to create content blocks. These are content blocks. The content blocks will range from text blocks, button blocks. Um, you have the ability to add images, videos, empty spaces, separators, and do many features as you're seeing listed here. We're focusing on checklists in this video. For the checklist, you have to be specific to who the checklist is for, and you always can add both if you wanted to. In the case, I only have the CRM one, but you can add both the onboarding checklist for your CRM target, and you can also add one specifically for staff 
Only the targeted individuals will see their type of checklist. Let's add the onboarding one. So you're seeing the preview of the actual checklist that I have here. You can see the buttons. When clicking edit, you will just be able to add it those same block options that you just initiated before, but we have to see exactly what it looks like. So let's actually set up this right now. So let's gonna say onboarding. It automatically populates it on both sections. And then I'm going to add my user here to be the test user. And then we're gonna go ahead and save this. And I'm gonna preview it on this screen, but I'm gonna also show you it from the client view. So we'll go ahead and preview, and we're gonna go and look at Marie Lewis and see what Marie Lewis is gonna see. So you have the ability to see all the checklist items, which is amazing, but I wanna see it from the actual impersonation of Marie Lewis. So let's go ahead and impersonate Marie. From initiation, Marie will see the checklist. She'll also see the buttons. I've already went ahead and clicked the first button, but she can see the see more options as well as when she clicks the link, she can click the link to take her to the link action that I provided. When she is completed, she can click yes, or if she's stuck, she can click help, I'm stuck. This will send a message. This is a test, plus than that. And then I'm gonna hit send. So when that message is sent, it will notify you on the back end that the message was sent. But if she just figures it out, she can also click yes and it will be marked as completed. Whatever actions you had already set up on the back end will then be also notified, removed, and all the things. She can move forward to the next step. Each button is different. So each button will be the buttons that you've designed. This takes me directly to the portal page um, or the action item that I've assigned to this button. And as you can see, it did open a new tab. So that's always great. You can always have have them do this option again if they need to but this shows you the level of consistency on how this works and each of these steps have their own separate automations and upon completion there's another notification that can be sent so each button has a link action or you can have it set to do nothing so once they've done all the steps I want to show you what it looks like on the back end so let's say that Marie did not complete this as yet um, and you wanted to see what the submission process looked like so the place that you will find the submissions will be similar to where you would find the flows and checklists. So you would go into the checklist item again, and then you would drop this option button down and see status slash submissions. This will show you any in progress checklist and any checklists that have already been completed. The greatest thing about this is that you can view the progress of the checklist and you can either start them over by resetting them or you can mark a checklist item complete. So this will trigger all the automations that are associated with that checklist. I think that is by far the coolest thing ever. So in any case, you're able to utilize these checklists to help your clients to move through processes. Let's talk about what it would look like to assign a checklist to an individual. Similar to a flow, you can actually assign it from the Sierra. By assigning it to them, you will choose assign to checklist and select the checklist item that you would want to assign. You would hit save and they'll get that notification that pops up that says need action. It will then initiate the checklist. So in their viewpoint, they're going to see this notification and they'll also see a need action button. Now that you're able to see checklists in action, let's talk about ways to implement it. You can either add them inside of your onboarding flow or create one-off checklists for goal setting or other checklist needs. The opportunities are absolutely endless. This does not limit you for any type of business. You can do it as a tax professional, a business coach, or an e-commerce business. Do you have any questions, concerns, or thoughts? Just feel free to email us and we'll be able to assist.